So there are a few there are a few specific illustrations I'd like I'd like to show you. This illustration that appears in both volumes, again, you can see they are absolutely identical. This is clearly, this isn't a re, this isn't someone else doing a new woodcut based on that woodcut. This is that woodblock. This is one of my favorite illustrations, though. You can see some of the, some of the things that it shows are the different kinds of sort of motive power that were available to people dealing with mines. Obviously, if you're going to be digging a mine, you need to get air down the shaft. Um, there's a, there's a, lot of, a lot of mechanics involved, ways to lift, with lift uh, ore up out of, the, you know, out, out of the mine. And you notice in this illustration, the, there's a windmill. There's one, there's one kind of power. You've got goats in a tread wheel, and then you have two men on a tread, on a tread mill. They are, their job for hour after hour every day is to walk in a circle, pushing, pushing, pushing on rods that turn th this mechanism. So, um, very interesting illustration, I think, that shows the sort of the, the, the uh, energy sources available at the time. And by the way, I would point out that of the, of the sources available here, the human labor was probably the least expensive. It was the 16th century, and certainly labor was very cheap. Another, another thing that I find interesting in this, in this volume is that several of the prints, and I don't know why this is, several of the wood, wood block woodcuts have dogs in them. I suppose dogs were, it may simply mean that dogs were kind of a constant presence in mines, but it's interesting that throughout the volume you'll see dogs f figuring as sort of uh, um, supporting characters in, in the illustrations. I suppose the main take home is that the illustrations were crucially important and that indeed this, the very same, the very same wood blocks were used edition after edition after edition. This is some 60 years later and sure enough it's the same wood blocks. Moving on to 1912, we have something that, that, uh, that a, lot, a lot of people don't know about. The only existing English language translation of De Re Metallica was done in 1912 by Herbert Clark Hoover and Lou Henry Hoover. Yes, that is the Herbert Hoover, who was president of the United States, and his wife, Lou Henry. A couple of really interesting people. Most people don't realize that Hen Herbert Hoover was uh, a, a, a mining engineer, he had a degree in mining engineering, and his wife, Lou, was the first woman to receive a degree in geology from Stanford University. Very, very interesting woman. She was a geologist and a Latinist, and it was her idea that she and her husband should translate this monumental work which held, which held sway for 200 years. Now, of course, by 1912, this, this mid-16th century publication was no longer the go-to manual for anyone who was interested in mining or metallurgy or anything, but it's a great masterwork in the history of science, and Herbert and Lou Hoover set out to translate it, and they created the, the English language translation that we have today, and notably, of course, it's unsurprising to find that it is the same illustrations. They worked then, they continued to work. Of course, by 1912, there were all kinds of photo-mechanical ways to reproduce, to reproduce um, images. Back here, if you didn't have the wood blocks, you had to copy them onto another piece of wood. By the time, by the time Herbert and Lou Hoover were creating their, their translation of the work, they were able to, uh, to simply use photoreprographic methods. We actually have four copies of this English language translation. A lot, it's not surprising. A lot of MIT's rare books have been given to us over the years by, by alumni, by faculty, by, by other people associated with the Institute. This particular copy, uh, among the four that we own, is special to us because it was inscribed to James Killian, who was president of MIT for, in the 1950s. Um, to James R. Killian, Jr., with the good wishes of Herbert Hoover. They were, they were buddies.